different animals and plants may live in a woodland environment. They may live in many different places within the woodland, such as this rotting log. The place where an animal or plant lives is called a habitat. The rotting log is the habitat of these wood lice. A freshwater environment, such as a pond or a stream, also provides habitats for a number of different organisms. The habitat of these worms is the sediment called detritus found at the bottom of ponds and streams. There are many different types of habitats for plants and animals in woodland and freshwater environments. The habitat of this plant overlaps with the habitat of the caterpillar. But the world is not made up of a continuous series of randomly overlapping habitats. For the convenience of the biologist, the environment may be divided into well-defined regions known as ecosystems. These ecosystems consist of many closely related habitats and all the organisms in them. Ecosystems have well-defined energy inputs and outputs. Light is the main energy input into the woodland ecosystem. In the case of a freshwater environment, such as a pond or a stream, light again is an important energy input. However, energy may also enter these ecosystems by way of dead animals or plants falling into the water. Energy from sunlight is trapped by green plants and converted into carbohydrates such as starch and cellulose. Single-celled plants, known as algae, such as this one which grows on tree trunks, are also capable of trapping sunlight and converting it into chemical energy. If we look through a microscope at a sample of water taken from near the surface of a pond, we can see that it contains many algae. During the daytime, these cells are all converting light energy into chemical energy by photosynthesis. Some ponds and streams also contain other plants which make this conversion from light energy into chemical energy. All these plants convert energy into a form which can be used by animals or other plants for food. They are thus called primary producers and represent the first stage of energy flow through the ecosystem. This energy flow system is called a food chain. These animals are called herbivores as they feed off dead or living plant material. They consume the food made by the primary producers. This freshwater snail is a primary consumer as it lives off algae growing on the surface of stones in streams and ponds. It occupies the second stage in a freshwater food chain. Pond water examined under the microscope also reveals the presence of microscopic animals. They feed off the algae and so are primary consumers.
These are a diverse range of animals. Some are fully grown, others may grow up to be insects or other invertebrates. Flatworm may eat other animals which are much larger than itself. The stonefly larva hunts its prey on the rocky beds of streams and rivers. There are a variety of animals in a freshwater ecosystem which eat other animals. In a woodland ecosystem, there are also a number of animals which feed off primary consumers. These animals are carnivores and are classified in the food chain as secondary consumers. In some instances, the secondary consumer may eventually be eaten by another carnivore, which would be classified as a tertiary consumer. You may wish to construct your own food chain, filling in the plants and animals which fit into the different stages. Not all the energy received by the primary producers is passed on down the food chain. When animals eat plants or other animals, only some of the food is incorporated into their bodies. Much is burnt off as heat energy, and undigested food is expelled as faeces. Before we can understand how energy is passed through an ecosystem, we need to define some terms. Trophic level is a term used to describe the classifications we have been using when describing the food web. Biomass is the amount of food in any one trophic level which is available to animals in the next trophic level. It is estimated by sampling rather than by trying to obtain a total figure. The biomass at each trophic level can be represented diagrammatically in the form of a pyramid of biomass. At the base of the pyramid, which represents the primary producers, there is the greatest biomass. The amount of biomass then rapidly decreases going up the trophic levels until we reach the tertiary consumer, which offers such a small biomass that the ecosystem is usually not capable of sustaining a quaternary or fourth level consumer. One serious weakness of the pyramid of biomass is that it does not take into account productivity. These small seaweeds are primary producers. They grow quickly yet have a small biomass. Whereas the primary producers in a forest, the plants and trees, have a large biomass, yet they grow relatively slowly. Another drawback with using the pyramid of biomass is that it does not take into account decomposers. Decomposers are organisms which degrade dead or dying plant or animal material. For example, bacteria, fungi, earthworms and wood lice. These organisms play a very important role in the recycling of valuable nutrients and removing bulky dead organic material from the ecosystem. The human diet is omnivorous. We eat both plants and animals and so do not fit into any one trophic level.
Due to our agricultural methods, we live in an artificial ecosystem. Pyramids of biomass are useful when monitoring changes in the ecosystem. They may be used to show changes which may occur seasonally. The following simulation will show what happens when a sudden growth in the population of algae in a pond occurs in late spring. Perhaps you would like to rewind the tape later and try to explain why the biomass at the different trophic levels is changing in this way. <laughs> 